This week, the salvage squad have been called out to fix up a sick old steamboat. And obviously, because it's salvage squad, there's not a river in sight, we're in a bloody field. And since we are in the middle of the landlocked county of Warwickshire, we're about as far from the sea as you can get. Oh, got an engine. So All we've right. got a boat and we've got an owner. Adrian. Hi. Hello there, mate. Um, you've got a, quite a dilapidated boat here. How old is it? Don't really know. Um, had it about five years. Have you not got a logbook or anything like that? I, I've got no history on it at all. We took it on. I got distracted with work and everything else. Yeah. Good intention. And you decided to just, uh, instead of putting it on a river, you thought, <laughs> no, this is definitely a field boat. <laughs> Abandon it in the corner of a field. Stick it in There's the corner very of good the field. logic for it being there, here. Go on then. Wooden boat um, yeah. doesn't want to dry out, otherwise it's going to get hard and crack. OK. Yeah. So, put it down the corner of the field, moist, but keep the weather off it, it's not going to rot. We've got grass growing through the hole here. <laughs> that's, that's, now, I'm not, no, I'm not an expert, Jerry, but that's not good, is it, grass growing through the bottom of the boat? Seen that. <laughs> Adrian's dreamt of doing up his boat ever since he got her. But Adrian isn't someone who just does things up. He's a perfectionist. Even working every spare minute, it would take him months to achieve the kind of restoration he'd be happy with. He's faced up to the fact that the only way he'll see his boat back in the water is if he lets the salvage squad loose on her. Even so, he'll be keeping a close eye on the quality of the squad's workmanship. Adrian wants to show her off at the prestigious Steamboat Association's Windermere Rally. Think crafts, but for steamboats. And it's only one week away. This is Ascot on the water for steamboat fans. No riffraff allowed. If we can't get Adrian's boat gleaming like her sister's, she'll be turned back at the jetty. What do you think? In all seriousness, we've got nearly everything, I reckon. We've got to stand a chance. One got to give week. it a go. One week. One week. Missing a boiler. Boiler. Ah, boiler. Down, Down at there. the end. Cool. Cue the boiler woman. <laughs> <laughs> what does it look like, Claire? Is it in good shape? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I wouldn't like to comment. I'm just trying to be optimistic here. I wouldn't like here. to comment. It's steam that runs through Adrian's veins. He meticulously restores model engines for clients all over the world. This is the first time he's allowed strangers in his workshop. You happy with that? Aren't you? Yeah, I'm very happy with that. It's no surprise then that he looks a little bit anxious as the squad begin to move her from the field. Jerry, we have the trailer. Right, you are. Yeah, and we need everyone away from here because basically we'll have to swing it out to get right. it out of the stick. Okay. So everyone clear, please. Up we go. Right, up we go. Right, Jerry. Bring her back. Meanwhile, Claire is doing her impression of Miss Marple. That's a beautiful boat, wonderful. But I don't know, there's something wrong that the, the boiler doesn't quite fit with the hull. When you say it doesn't fit, you mean, well, we haven't actually put it in there yet, so we don't know if it, do you mean it fit? It doesn't fit sort of the styling of it. Aesthetically? I mean, yeah, aesthetically, the, the boat's beautiful yeah. and uh, really fine. And the boiler's kind of a bit crude. Is it so not just because it's been left out in the no, field? No, 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 it's more about the styling of it. So I don't know, I don't know. Let's ask the owner if he knows anything more about it. So but you're saying if you don't think it's the right boiler? Possibly not. Not the original boiler. Beautiful boat. Lovely plumage. Done. With the boat safely in the trailer, the squad head for Adrian's workshops at the top of the field. In its former life, Adrian's boat was once judged the most beautiful steamboat on the Norfolk Broads. She's part of a history that can be traced back to the 1780s, when the first steam launches appeared on the River Clyde. When Queen Victoria became a fan some 50 years later, all the toffs simply had to have one, and by the 1860s the layout was pretty much as it is today. A boiler amidships, the middle to you landlubbers, supplies high pressure steam to an engine, which in turn drives a propeller in the stern, or as we call it, the back. If the team is to get to Lake Windermere, they're gonna to have to restore each one of those and repair the hull. This is the operating theatre, where the salvage squad have just six days to perform their surgery. The patient's on the table. Her organs have been taken out, but what's the diagnosis? Will she live? So what do you reckon, is this, I mean, what sort of shape does this look like to you? It doesn't look bad. What I would like to do is have, have a hydraulic test on it, mm. which is basically 
get it full of water, yeah. pump it up, pump it up, pump it up, get plenty of pressure in it. I gotcha. If anything goes wrong, if anything splits, all that happens is you get a little drip of water. Yeah. Whereas if it happens with steam, we're in big, big trouble. What would it, what would it actually do? Would it just explode? Or? Yeah, it would be very, very nasty indeed. Because, of course, steam expands, continues yeah. to expand, it just rip itself. That out. would actually be a lot more dramatic, though, wouldn't it? It'd be very dramatic. I mean, and, do you um, not think we're going to have an accident? We should go out big. No. OK. <laughs> At the bench, Axel's getting a masterclass from the squad steam expert, Claire. How are we doing? Oh, I'm learning. You're learning, <laughs> yeah, yeah? very quickly. Reverse and yep. forward. That's it. So your boat can go forwards and backwards. How old do you think this, this engine is? To be honest, I don't really know. But there's something... It's not the same age as the boiler. Right. And both of them aren't the same age as the hull. OK. So there's something not quite matching up here. She was mentioning this to me, this to me yeah. earlier, actually. I mean, I, I, why is it... Why do you think it's different from the boiler? The, the, start, the styling's different, the fitment's different, it's a much more expensive machine. What, the engine is? Yeah, the engine is. Yeah. It's much more delicate and sophisticated. So um, it just doesn't quite marry up. I just want to sum up what we're doing here. We're basically going to test the engine, mm -hmm. completely rebuild it. Have a look inside. Yeah, and then Jerry's already said about testing the boiler as well, make sure that's safe and it'll work, mm -hmm. hopefully. And then we come over here to the boat itself. We've got Adrian and Jerry back in here. Uh, by the way, has this boat got a name? Jane. Jane, I noticed earlier over in the field, and I've noticed here, that we've got loads of holes in the boat that you're plugging. Yeah. Well, yeah. loads, not a few, there's <laughs> loads, there's daylight. Well, the, the long, thin ones. Put it this way, if you put a vampire in there, <laughs> it would die in daylight. There's enough light coming through, trust me on that. So how, how, do, we, how do we fix it up there? Bit, bit of corking. Bit, put a cork in. <laughs> so we just go around hammering corks in there? No, corking, corking. Oh, right. not I mean, a cork in. Oh, right. <laughs> So we've got corking to do, and what, is, what exactly is that? Is this, this white stuff? That, well, that, that's the signal on top. Corking, it's like string. Yeah. Thick string, wind it up, hammer it in with a chisel, okay? Fill the back of the gap and then fill the front with a, with a sealant. Right, and that, that's, that's it, watertight. Watertight, yeah. lovely. Safe. So we've got that. Anything else we need to do? Bit of plumbing. Bit of plumbing. Connect the boiler up to the engine. Basically, I'll shoot off and see what I can find out about the engine and the boiler. There's a maker's plaque at the back. Oh. There you go. Fosper & Co Limited, Yacht and Launch Builders, Portsmouth, England. Oh, and there's a number. Can you see that from there? 1435. You have a very good eyes, right? If they're to rise to Adrian's challenge, Claire will have to delve deep within the engine to coax it back to life. Jerry will come within a thousandth of an inch of losing it, and Axel will come face to face with the devil himself in the form of two planks and a mile of cotton. And all the time, Adrian will be cracking the whip. One precious day gone, and all the team have done is shifted the boat and figured out what's wrong with her. In the next five days, they're going to have to carry out tests on the boiler, clean and overhaul the engine, cool and paint the hull, and plumb the boiler to the engine. And if they manage to do all that, there's always a steamy's favourite. Polish, polish, and yet more polish. As for me, I've booked a trip to Portsmouth to find out more about Jane. The address on the plaque on the boat said Portsmouth, so we went there and we had a nice day there. But they're not there anymore, they've moved. We asked, we were told they've moved here to Southampton. So we've got to go over there to Vosper Thornycroft and try and find out about our little boat Jane. During the First World War, Vospers became famous for sinking German ships with their motor torpedo boats, which is why the Luftwaffe repaid the compliment by visiting their Portsmouth yard during World War II. After the war, what was left of the company joined forces with their main rivals Thornycroft, and the new company, Vosper Thornycroft, moved to Southampton. Nowadays, they're best known for their minesweepers, all of which makes our little boat Jane look fairly insignificant in the company's history. But, unless Hitler got them first, I'm hoping Vosper's naval architect, Peter Brown, might still have some record of her. So these microfilms cover some of our earliest drawings uh, where we had records that weren't destroyed during the Second World War. And if we look under boats and cruisers, and I think we have a drawing. Back in Warwickshire, the squad are into their second day. Claire and Axel are about to tackle their first big challenge, cleaning and pressure testing Jane's boiler. 
That's it. You, you put your feet up and I'll do the work. That's it. As the water in Jane's boiler turns to steam, the pressure rises. Unchecked, it would blow the boiler up just like a balloon until it exploded, making a right mess. Which is why all steam boilers, even your humble pressure cooker, are fitted with a safety valve designed to release excess steam long before the boiler goes bang. The first and only rule of boiler testing is don't use steam until you know the boiler can take it. So Claire is using water to pump the boiler up to twice working pressure. Okay, 300. If there are any problems, the worst that will happen is that someone will get wet. Just as well as it turns out, our boiler has a loose pipe. If we'd been using steam, Axel would now be dead. Jerry, meanwhile, has another set of leaks to deal with. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Before they can recork the hull, all the old stuff has to be removed. When you get the corking out, life is but a dream. Yeah, they're all dry, nothing to drink yeah. at all. Sure. On inspection, the inside of the boiler was in good nick, while the loose pipe needed a tweak with a spanner. So, time to get steamed up. Axel fixes the safety valve while Claire sets the fire. I'll give you around here, going to burn you, look. With the boiler lit, the pressure gauge creeps towards the maximum of 150 pounds per square inch. If the boiler's going to pass the steam test, the safety valve needs to blow any minute now. All they can do is wait. Any second now? Just wait for it and then check in. Yes! That's it! We've got a boiler. There we go. Excellent. <laughs> cool. Pressure's off. We've got a working boiler. But what about the engine? With luck, all it'll need is a bit of spit and polish. All we have to do is connect the steam feed, open the steam inlet valve, and watch what happens. This one. Yeah. Oh, why is that hitting that? I think it's seized. Not good. Claire's now going to have to take the engine apart to find out why it isn't running. While she's doing that, the boys start the big job of making sure the boat will stay afloat when they get it back in the water. And at the end of day two, they're already behind schedule. So Adrian steps in to give them a lesson in caulking. We're just going to tuck it into the, tuck it into the seam. OK? Then we need caulking chisel, hammer. OK? Not a big hammer, just, just sufficient. OK? We're just going to knock it back into the seam, just a little bit, not too far. Just work our way down. Easy, you might think, but there's one small problem. You've got one and a half kilometres of this stuff to get in. That's a mile. That's a mile. <laughs> nobody gets fed, nobody goes to bed until it's done. Are you sure? <laughs> I think it means this. It's now day three of the restoration of the steam launch Jane. The boiler works, but Claire's going to have to find out why the engine doesn't. While the boys have just a day to run one mile of caulking into the cracks of Jane's hull. While they got on with that, I was still in Southampton with Vosper's architect Peter Brown, searching for some trace of Jane. We were about to get lucky. One, four, three, one, five. four, three, five. Now this happens to be the drawing of the boat. Is it that specific boat? It is that specific. It is this one. Looking at the the, the date of the drawing here, which is the first of January, nineteen twenty-one, you're very lucky to have a boat of this age in the condition that you say it's in, because that's that's pretty old for a wooden boat. And it years, obviously yeah. must have been. Either well looked after or nature looked after it for you I very think, well. I think nature looked after it. It was probably looked up, well looked after up to a point and then Adrian got his hands on it and thought it would set my field off lovely. I mean, in those days, they wouldn't have drawn much more than that. No. That would have been it. They'd have gone away and built that boat just yeah. from that. They've taken the trouble here to decide there's two ways of building it. One is clinker, one is carvel. What's clinker and carvel? Well, clinker is where you've got these overlapping planks on right. the outside. And carvel is where all the planks join end to end. Look, I think you see, so it's smooth on the that, outside. That's the one we've got. So that's the that's the one, right? Yeah, there you that, go. it's my recollection. That's the one. Right. We were, they were talking about caulking the, the side of the hull, and I remember it being quite smooth. 
As Jerry and Axel are finding out, making Jane's smooth Carvel built hull watertight has its frustrations. A mile of cotton has to be squeezed between the planks. You do realise we get this right, it's serious brownie points made with. How much longer for you lot? I'd be tempted to say about a week. Sadly, they've only got one day to do it. Caulking can be traced back at least as far as the Bronze Age. The idea is to fill the back of the gaps between the planks with cotton and then cover it with flexible mastic. The result is a smooth seal that will expand and contract with the planking. Caulking is one of those jobs that will drive you mad. It looks easy, but it's not. First you need to twist the cotton up with a drill to make it nice and fat to fit in the crack. Then you have to hammer it into the crack with a chisel. Too far. Hit it too hard and it will go through. But fail to twist it up enough or hit it into the crack too softly and it will soon fall out. This is going to take a very long time. While the boys are getting to grips with this Bronze Age technology, Claire's taking apart our seized engine. Who knows what lurks beneath the cover plate. Finally we get to see inside the engine. Wonderful. Beautifully domed lid. So that when the top of the piston comes up, that nut, it's not going to strike a flat plate. Lots of room for, cover, for expansion. And it's, and it's absolutely fine in there. Absolutely fine. When it stuck yesterday, if you look down the bore, you can see there's no scoring on the cylinder. It's still beautifully machined. So when it got stuck, when we put some steam through it, I think it must have been just been solidified oil or something, just holding it together. Holding it together. Absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. Not worried about that at all. <laughs> it's lovely to see inside the machine. Back in Southampton, I was also getting to know Jane a bit better. There's a lovely lot of detail there that you'll probably recognise when you see and match it up with your boat. Yeah. I mean, there's the there's the a bronze bollard there, for instance, and a fair lead over the stem. Would it have on here um, anything to do with the boiler? Do you know? Well, Can there we we've got it? the shaft line, the propeller, stuffing box, and the casing, well, the wooden casing for the engine. There is no provision there for a boiler, so that has got to be a petrol, paraffin, or oil engine. Oh. What, so, so the original boat wasn't a steamboat then? The boat was originally designed as a motor launch, look. So it's got a motor rather than a steam rather launch? Rather than a steam launch. It would have said right. steam launch. Right. So we've bought a ringer then. Yeah. This has come from a chop shop, hasn't it? We've got two halves of one boat. We've got like the, the base of the boat and then all the parts that go on it are not from the original boat. Is that what it you're saying? It would appear the original boat, this boat, 1435, was not a steam launch. Oh. Now... As they say in steam circles, this is a bit of a blow. It might just pour cold water on the whole restoration process, which is a shame, because back in the workshop, Jerry appears to have things under control. He's abandoned Adrian's caulking techniques, proved to work since the Bronze Age, and come up with his own way of doing things. What we're doing is, rather than doing the loop business, we're bringing it out, putting the tension in it, letting it come back a bit, laying it nice and loose against the hull, and it's going in a dream. I mean, the difference is we, we're going to be able to put a seam in now in maybe five or six minutes, and it was taking us over an hour. Oh, yeah, look at that. Just the time saved is phenomenal. Good news on the engine bench too. There are no major problems, and Claire's almost got it back together again. Someone took an awful lot of time and trouble to make this engine, so... Um... It's our duty to look after it properly and uh, restore it to what it obviously once was. An amazing piece of work. Steam, steam, steam your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. No, we don't do it that way anymore. <laughs> that just shows a really quick way. The squad are in high spirits, but the sound of sea shanties brings Adrian back to the workshop. When he let the squad get out of his boat, he told them he wanted a perfect job. And he means to get it, even if he has to ruffle a few feathers. How are we doing, guys? Nearly there. We've got eight still on this side. What the hell have you been doing? We don't get this in tonight. We are not going to get the sealer in. Yeah. It's not going to be dry. No, we can't sell it tomorrow. That. 
We know that. Yeah, you keep saying no, but you ain't actually doing it. I mean, it's supposed to be helping, but, you know. Come on, Jerry. Look, daylight. Yeah. I've still got daylight. Yeah? Come on. It looks like Claire can forget finishing the engine tonight. Me and Hans, let's get them to the other side then. Whip that off, Jerry. As darkness falls, the squad finds out just how high Adrian's standards are. Axel, I have to say I'm not overly content with your corking, mate. Help Jerry get that last bit in, and you two get another one stripped and put in. Yeah, and then me and Claire will follow down and make a proper job of it. Yeah, Otherwise, it just ain't going to get done. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I don't want to have to do it again. Hey, some good news for you guys. Go on. You don't have to start at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Yeah, 7. No, you'll still be here at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, so... <laughs> An hour later, and the squad realised that Adrian wasn't joking. Guys, let's just stand back for a couple of minutes. Let's have a, let's have a shufty. Yeah, let's take five. Um... <clears throat> Have you actually wound this up with a drill axle? Yes. That's wound up with a drill? It was. You know, we're going to be here till dawn, so... Yes. OK, a bit more care, people, yeah? I'll carry on with what I'm doing. It seems everybody's relatively satisfied with that work. Seems I'm good at that, so I'll continue with that. Well, well, well what are you doing? Actually, spinning it, getting it in the seam, getting it to fill up the gaps. Right, well, there, I mean, there have been pieces where I've gone across all, all these red marks where I've had to go across where it's actually gone through. Agreed. And I'm having to splice it, so, but you should be picking that up when you're going across. Yeah, okay. I mean, just, just tidy it up, just, you know, yes. take a little bit more time, tidy it up, yeah? Yes, no problem. All right. In the old days, the sailors called the longest seam to be caulked the devil, which is where we get the phrase, caught between the devil and the deep blue sea. So perhaps it's no surprise that this is turning out to be one hell of a job. Maybe we've got, what, one, two, three, four, five seams left to put in and seven seams left to hammer home. Yeah? yeah. If we get stuck at it, we can, we can crack it. Had Jerry's patent caulking method been up to Adrian's standards, at least they would have got to bed on time. Now, with only the boiler test finished by the end of day three, they've little choice but to knuckle down while Adrian takes charge of the night shift. By the morning, they've finished caulking, but there's only time for a swift cuppa before the hard work starts again. I was well chuffed with you because I could see you starting to go and you just get... Yeah, I heard him come across that drive again was... Oh, the crunch, the gravel. Yeah, and it just made me want to... I thought you'd both had sense of humour failures. <laughs> Trust me, but basically, the caulking's done. We've got to do the sealant, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. I've still got the engine to finish off. Actually, the climb's finished. <laughs> Let's do the work. Come on. Get the... no, I'll leave it there. Yeah. Sailors call the sealant over the caulking pay, which is why we talk about there being the devil to pay. Paying the devil, the longest seam, is what Axel's doing. This is beyond the call of duty, this one. While Adrian checks his workmanship. Meanwhile, Claire and Jerry start to transform the boiler from a lump of rust into a work of art. With the caulking and sealing finished, Axel gets to give the funnel a rub. These wooden planks aren't just there to make the boiler look pretty. Their main job is to provide insulation from the scalding heat of the boiler itself. The glue is just to keep the planks in place until the brass straps are tightened up. Once the brass work is fitted and a quick coat of varnish applied, a lump of scrap is transformed into an elegant antique ready to put in the boat. But sticking a steam engine and a boiler into a motor launch is a tight fit and I'm heading back from Vospers to reveal to the squad that all their hard work and late nights may just have been for nothing. It's day four of the restoration, and the squad think they're back on target to get Jane ready for Lake Windermere. But I've got news they might not want to hear. These are the original plans mm. to this actual, this actual boat, because we've got the, the job number there. We have a slight problem here. This was originally a motor launch. It wasn't a steamboat at right. all. If you look here, it, there's telltale signs. A, the word motor. Yeah. 
up from is a fuel tank, which I'm guessing is this this yeah. thing here. We've got a water tank. tank. No, right. don't do water okay, tank. that was the fuel tank, and it was a petrol engine. As you can see, there's no there's no chimney stack or anything on it. Mm. It was a petrol engine. Well, this explains why the engine and the boiler don't quite marry up with the hull. I know, because you flagged that up and it, you, you were right, basically. Yeah. But effectively, if we're doing a restoration for this, maybe we should be looking at putting a petrol engine in. Maybe, I'm, I don't mean it'll be horrible, but maybe all the work you've done with a boiler... Don't look at me like that. <laughs> yeah, it's biting it talk, mate. Depends, the, depends depends the, gonna, the rules. Why know? don't you just restore it back restore to when, it. The petro, when the steam engine went in there? There's only one man that can make that decision. You are not putting a petrol engine back in my launch, OK? OK, OK. <laughs> but, I mean, are you surprised at this, though, that this happened? Not really, no. I mean, out of all the steam launches that are out there, I mean, there's probably 10% that are original built steam launches from right. the turn of the century so or before. So the remainder would have Most had petrol? Of it, or yeah, I mean, they're, they're conversions, either from rowing boats or from murder boats or something. You, you, you take a nice contemporary hull that's, you know, lost its way, it's been abandoned, you build yourself a nice steam plant or you find an old steam plant yeah. and marry the two together. Right, You're just so creating something in the style of... Yeah. So, it, effectively, when we go up to Lake Windermere, we're not going to get picked on as the sort of, you're clearly not a steamboat. No, no, because there'll be They're loads not going to be more. chucking coal at us, for instance. <laughs> yeah, well, they might do. <laughs> <laughs> the decision's been made. All that remains is the tricky bit, squeezing a half-ton boiler into a very tight space. But push it a little bit your way, it's not, not too hard. Stop the fretting! You're not fretting, if this goes wrong, you've got to mind your fingers from underneath, put your fingers out, OK? Right, Axel, you're going to have to bring it, no, to me, to me, Axel. Axel, to me, you've got the studs on. No, stop! No, no, you come to me, come here. We've got a tap. We've got a tap that's going to catch on this chair. That boiler will go in that hole. Oh, is this an extension that you put on? Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. That's the extension put on for pumping it up, wasn't it? Do you remember? Yeah. Well, let's, let's, listen, let's have this boiler back out and on the deck. OK. OK, I'm not happy with it sitting there like that. Axel scores an equaliser. With Adrian's nose a little out of joint, the offended tap is removed and the lift begins again. Right, you look, you two watch the size of me because I can't have the back. Is he going to clear that, yeah? Right, that's too far. I had to clear the seat, okay. all right? Um, yeah. Go. That, towards Jerry, one inch. Now, giving this much, pull, pull, slower, too slow, really slow. Really slow. That's it. That's it, right. Now, really slow. Right, right. Right. Ready, chat? Let it all on. Come down more. Hang on. Just right, That's it. Good. Come That's level it. up. That's very good. Excellent, guys. Blimey. Brownie points from Adrian. Things are looking up. With the boiler in place, it's time to start the plumbing. Axel's got to join the pipe that will run from the safety valve to the top of the chimney, so that any escaping steam won't poach the crew. Excellent. Okay. Right. Can I watch? You could. Well, you'd like to watch. Oh, I'd love to watch. <laughs> I'd love to. I'd love to see you in that. Oh, you've got a mask. Yes. Walk this way. I will do. Do I get a mask? Basically, it's going to take about three, four minutes before we can put the cut solder on it. What? It takes that long to heat up. You have to make this glow red. Yeah. I might watch from a distance. Oh, right, you watch from a distance. Taxi! <laughs> when the safety valve kicks in, the steam in this pipe will be so hot that it will melt ordinary solder. So Axel's using silver-based solder, which is a much higher melting point than the stuff your plumber uses. The engine has joined the boiler inside the boat. The squad now have just two days left to complete the plumbing and paint the hull. But as day five dawns, Adrian remembers something rather crucial. There's one thing we've actually forgotten in all this. Go on. We've got a boiler, boat, engine. Yeah. Well, look at the back. <laughs> the propeller. Has it got one? No. Where's the prop? Here. Is this the right one, yeah? Well, it's, one, it's the one that came in the boat. Let's have a shifty. 
Yeah, the hole's too big. <laughs> so we need a collar to go inside. Make a hire. Who's the machinist, man? Jerry. It looks horribly like my department, then. You okay. manage that? Have it. Do you think I can manage that? I don't know, can you? Now, the problem the team have landed Jerry with is that the hole in the middle of the propeller is larger than the shaft onto which it's got to fit. So Jerry's got to make a new piece of metal that will fit tightly into the hole in the propeller and then drill a hole down the middle of it which will fit snugly onto the propeller shaft. But as with most things in life, it's not that simple. This hole here is a different size this end to this end. Which means it's not just a case of getting my bar and making it smaller in diameter along its length, sliding it through. It's got to be what's called taper turned, which essentially means that I've got to start it off big at one end and I've got to gradually reduce it in diameter to the other. I hope I've not taken too much off here. Just as Jerry gets going, Adrian brings him another piece of good news. We've only got one bit of bronze. That I'm more than aware of. Yeah, so I'd rather you get it right, because otherwise you're paddling at the back. Not good, it's really. Not going to look quite we'll take your propeller and see if you make a propeller. Probably would. Yeah, OK. Well, you'd, you'd have wrapped me in knots by that point anyway. <laughs> All right, take Let's it Let's beat steady. Jerry into a propeller shape. <laughs> All right, you carry on. This is where you duff it up and break the tool and get into all sorts of trouble with the boss. After the last few days, the last thing I want to do is cock it up in front of Adrian. The lathe is one of the oldest machine tools around, dating back at least as far as the 14th century. It works by spinning the metal in a central chuck, just like a drill, and then applying a chisel-like tool which can shave off minute quantities of metal resulting in parts accurate to within a few thousandths of an inch. But it's not as easy as it looks. Mm, you're going to have to go all the way up there again, aren't you? Why are you going to have to go all the way up there again? Because you started the cut from the wrong place, you muppet. With Jerry turning into Kermit the Frog, I figured it was time to attempt to solve the mystery of Jane's transformation from motorboat to steam launch. Adrian had bought her from fellow engineer David Sykes, who steamed her on the Norfolk Broads. Ten years ago, a debilitating illness meant he could no longer look after her properly. He took her out of the water and five years ago sold her to Adrian. David still lives on the Broads though, and with any luck, he'll be able to shed some light on the mystery. So, uh, so uh, you know the There's Jim, we first found it. Oh, this is Jane. That is, we, that is we first found it ever. That's all the front deck did that you, I made new. Did you make that one as well? Yeah. You did? Um, this is doing the steam the ribs. When you say steam it, is that to help bend? Yeah, bend, bend, bend the wood. Bend, you have to steam wood. it first yeah. to get it yeah. flexible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it. So it turns out that it was David that reinvented Jamie as a steam launch, and not only that, I discovered that he'd actually made the engine and the boiler himself. He actually built everything himself from scratch? Yeah. I mean, that's absolutely amazing. There's the first again. time the engine ever run. I made that engine. I made that engine. David's engine is a Stuart Turner 6A. It's based on an original design that goes back to 1915. But David bought it as a set of castings and machined all the other parts himself. This is the first time the boiler would ever lit. Mystery solved. Jane had been bought as a rotting hole by a brilliant engineer who'd rescued her using one of the many engines and boilers he made himself. But having solved one mystery, David set me up with another. Yeah, this, I made this and that's part of Jane. I think it should go back where it came from. So what is this? You're not, you're not going to tell me, are you? No, 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 no. Well, I'm no. going to take this up to Lake Windermere and see if any of the squad can actually tell me what it is. Meanwhile, our other master engineer was making progress. Oh, yes! That's how it should fit. Sadly, that was the easy bit. Hollowing it out so that it fits the prop shaft will be much trickier. Oh well, that's it. Happy bunny now. 
Because the end of the shaft is tapered, Jerry will first have to drill a hole down the centre of the collar and then use a lathe to taper out the edges so it will exactly mirror the cone-shaped propeller shaft. His first task is to position it accurately on the lathe. I'm not happy. This is so critical. I mean, OK, it's a steam engine, the prop will turn relatively slowly, but if it's wrong, it's out of balance and it'll shake the boat apart. And it's not something I want to be responsible for. I mean, I shall work it out, but it's... Hi, right, Joe. If you're going to tell me to hurry up... No, I, was, I said all right, Joe. What's wrong? I'm having a very unhappy time of this. Why, mate? What are you trying to do? I'm trying to get it onto this face place right, and it's, it's not going for me. I've already drilled three... Jerry's problem is securing the prop to the lathe in such a way that the collar is positioned exactly in the centre when he starts to hollow it out. Just a fraction of a millimetre off, and the prop will wobble and damage the boat. What's, what type of problem is it? I'm going to do some natural thinking and help. Meanwhile, Claire is starting to make the main steam pipe that will supply steam from the boiler to the engine. All right. You're winning. Just about. Poor old Jerry. He's all right. Right, mate, it's so hard, isn't it? It's someone else's workshop. It's someone else's lathe. Someone don't know where any of the tools are. Someone else's boat. It's not exactly the easiest job in the world. No, it's not. I think most of the evening time he works on stuff like that. And he's, well, it's his shed, isn't it? Home. Yeah. So he's not disturbed and he hasn't got to ask anyone else where he yeah. had to put the thing down the other night. Hi, right, Joe. Right, mate. Do you want the real answer to that? Go on, what's on? Uh, I'm just fed up with frogging about in the workshop on my own. Did you get that thing also? Mm. Yeah, I'll have to take it off again. Why? Because I'd forgotten to lock tight the thing in there because I'm too knackered even to think. Before Jerry can commit himself to hollowing out the inside of the collar, he's got to be absolutely sure he's got his measurements right. 7955. Whatever that is in real life. Eight. I think he's been on his own for too long. He's getting yeah. cabin fever in the workshop. Do you want to go and have a word? Yeah. What's wrong, mate? Tell me. What's wrong? The pressure's really getting to Jerry. He knows that if he makes even the slightest mistake, the propeller will be useless and no one will be going to the lakes. Yes, that's right. Beach. We're all under a bit of pressure, no worries. The squad are now one day away from Windermere. Claire and Axel are putting the final touches to the plumbing, and after a night of nightmares, Jerry is about to start the most critical job of all, turning an angle inside the collar so it will fit perfectly onto the tapered shaft. A great machinist friend of mine said, always measure twice, cut once. Wise words, I think. For Claire and Axel, there's one big job to finish. Bring me my weapon. They're going to spend the rest of the day sanding the hole smooth before applying as many coats of paint as they can. Less than a week ago, this hole was rotting after five years at the bottom of a field. The squad have worked day and night to get her this far, but Jerry is still working on the collar. Pray God this is right. And no amount of painting will get her to Windermere by tomorrow if it doesn't fit. Come on, Axel. It's not that heavy a job. The moment of truth. Jerry's finally finished the inside of the collar. If it fits, they're on their way to Windermere. If it doesn't, then six days and several nights of work will be wasted. It either does, or it doesn't, it better. It's now the final day of Jane's restoration. 
And after a week of hard graft, success or failure rests on just one thing. Will Jerry's propeller fit? Come on, don't drag it out. Get it on. You want to know. So do I. Here we go. Well, you know. Ooh. I think that deserves a... A pat on the back. I tell you what, boys and girls, it didn't want to go on much further than that. Because no, that, that would be chopping big holes in the hull otherwise. Well, you carefully calculated it. I did carefully calculate it. I think we're there. She may be finished, but to find out if she'll float, there's a 200 mile drive from Warwickshire to the lakes. It's the morning of the steam rally and Jane is about to feel the water around her hull for the first time in 10 years. Like any boat that's been out of the water for a while, she's bound to leak a little. The question is, wow. how much? Right. Water coming in. Yeah. Well, she is floating. She's floating, but look at the amount of water in there. Yeah, you're right. It's a heck of a lot come in. Yeah? So, so quickly. They pull her out to see how bad things are. That is an absolute torrent. It is, isn't it? it? And we might actually have a split there. What can we do with that crack, that leak there? Well, nothing. Just hope it swells up. Right, and it seals so, itself. And it seals itself. I think it's just a case of throw it back in the water and uh, just let it take up a bit more. It's going to take at least two hours for the planks to swell enough for the water to stop coming in. Time to take stock on what's been a very tough week. Well, that's it in the water. Happy now. Mm. No, I'm happy. I wasn't before. Because <laughs> you are such a taskmaster, mate. But really, at the end of the day, it was worth it. But we have a deadline, don't we? Of course we did. I mean, and it's all done. we wouldn't have been able to do it without no. a taskmaster like yourself. And a brilliant squad like us. <laughs> Just fly the flag, yeah. <laughs> Were you happy with the work? Excellent. Yeah? Absolutely top notch. I mean, I couldn't have done it without you guys, basically. I mean, you know, you're the ones put all the effort in, you've been all the breath. So. <laughs> oh, don't cry, <laughs> After two hours, it's good news and bad news. The boat stopped leaking water from the bottom, but it started taking it in from the top. Fortunately, a few drops of rain won't put the boiler out. The squad light the fire and get up steam. Oh my God, it looks like I arrived just in time. You're on fire. Quick, throw water on it. Okay, yeah. Put it out. How you doing, mate? I'm doing all right. <laughs> You've done well here. You've done well here. It looks great. What's that you got there? This, this. I'm so bad. This, I'd love to get in, but um, I'm not allowed. What? But there's a sign there saying no more in. So I can't actually. <laughs> they've spelt it wrong, but the sentiment is right. <laughs> Move over. Let's give us a head. Oh, Come on, let the old boy get in. I got this off of um, David Sykes, the previous owner. It's, um, he done, I don't know what it is actually. I think it actually might be a kettle. A kettle? A Windermere kettle. A wind... It is, a Windermere kettle. So what, is, what, as in? Tea kettle. Cup of tea? Well, we've got these couple of pipes over there that obviously need something. What, so it'll run off of that? So do you get steam through there then? So basically, Ooh. come in in there, Yeah. put some water in the top, Okay. put some steam through it, Instant tea. I went and saw Dave and um, he got this when he, he basically got the boat as a wreck when he first got hold of it and he just put it together. But he's he's an engineer and he, he built this yeah. himself. Oh, right. He actually built the boiler. Right. And the engine? Right? It's all his handiwork. That's why we have a steamboat instead of a petrol engine. So when our suspicions were raised about the age of the boat and the age of the boiler, we were actually right in that they didn't quite well, tie. Yeah, this is his handiwork. So have we actually had a go of it yet? So I'm just intrigued. I'm sorry to dump on you like this, Jill, but I just wondered how, you, how your prop's going to cope. Because <laughs> you had a few problems. Problems with we your prop. We have a problem with the prop. Well, come on, let's find out then. Go on, then. No time like the present. How long, does, uh... does it, is it like, it's not, is it like an ignition? Do you just throw a switch? Does I don't it... know, I've never tried it before. Oh, shut up. This is up. my first time. <laughs> go, go on, on then. So 
Yeah. So the funny thing is, I thought it would go forwards. You put the propeller on backwards, didn't you? It's a new angle version, you see. So we've made it to Windermere with a dry boat and a boiler full of steam. But they promised Adrian she'd be good enough to gain admission to the prestigious steamboat rally. And to do that, she'll have to pass muster with none other than the technical director of the Windermere Steamboat Museum, David Matthews. And where better to do it than the Steamboat Museum itself, home to the prettiest steamboats of them all. Gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Looks like you're going somewhere. And lady. And lady. And lady. <laughs> morning, madam. We'd like to cast an approving eye, or maybe disapproving eye, over uh, our workmanship. Yeah, well, I, I, it's a good choice, isn't it? Because you need a quite a robust little boat for um, steam plant. Mm. <laughs> and it's a very nice workable solution, I think. Some people try to over-elaborate the restoration, mm. and I think that's a mistake. You know, it doesn't want to look like a grand piano. Uh, you know, you can see yourself going out and enjoying yourself. It's a working boat. It's, it's a working boat. The engine's a nice uh, size for it. Somebody put a lot of work in on that. Yes. Nicely balanced. Mm. So, are, you, are you happy with it being an old, an old hull with new steam plant? Of course, it? yeah. It's been very rare to find a completely original old steamboat, but the only place you'll find them is in this museum here. You don't need to get too hung up about not having the right I'm glad to. you said that, because <laughs> I told the chaps this and they were getting very upset. But the great thing is, it's a beautiful old boat and it's been put to a wonderful use, mm. isn't it? Not just rotting in somebody's back garden. Mm. That's, the best. <laughs> yeah. 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 that's where we found it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was in a rotting. field. Was in a field. Rotting. Oh, come on. If that wasn't rotting, that was virtually compost, man. Right? <laughs> <laughs> grass going through the bottom of it. Anyway. Yes. Yeah. Right. So are we, are we all right to take part then? Of course you are. Oh, yeah, there you go. We right. won. Yeah. We won. Absolutely. If the man yeah. says we can go, we can we're go. in. Success. Our Jane's no tramp steamer, and she's free to join the beauty pageant. <laughs> can you actually believe it? We made it here, then. In just six days and nights, the squad have managed to turn Jane from a pile of timber at the bottom of a field into a glistening steamboat worth around £20,000. Fit to join her sisters, on the waters of Lake Windermere. Which is <laughs> on the road, there's a lot of hand signals, but very rarely is it just a wave. <laughs> <laughs> Now, if these guys have got you thinking about that old piece of metal in the garage and you've got a computer at hand, click on the website. It's on the screen now, channel4.com science. But don't let that stop you watching what's coming up next on 4, an amazing program about lost civilizations featuring cities recently found off the coast of India that are over 10,000 years old. Flooded kingdoms of the Ice Age. It's here in minutes.